My name is Jana Teltemann. I'm an assistant professor of sociology of education at the University of Hildesheim in Germany. And my research is centered around international large-scale school assessments, like the OECD PISA study. And I'm looking at these studies uh, from two different perspectives, that is, effects and data. What kind of effects do these studies have on educational policies? In Germany, for example, it is common to speak of the PISA shock that happened after the results of the first PISA study were uh, published in 2001, uh, because PISA 2001 revealed that um, the average performance was much lower than expected, and also PISA revealed that the German education system was very unequal and that students from lower socioeconomic background and immigrant students had to face considerable difficulties. And so after this shock as a reaction, many reforms have been introduced in the German education system, and these reforms targeted particularly at those underprivileged students in order to raise their achievement and to equalize opportunities. And as an educational sociologist, I'm particularly interested in inequality of opportunity and in ways to overcome this inequality. And this is my second perspective on PISA, namely the data. The great advantage of the PISA data is that it includes many different countries and the large variety of different ways to organize learning and schooling. The disadvantage is that it's cross-sectional data, which means that we cannot be sure about the causality of associations between competences, for example, on the one hand, and different ways to organize learning in different countries on the other hand. And now here my two perspectives come together because I'm applying innovative methods to analyze these data because I look at policy changes and their effects on competences. And because policy changes may have effects, but they might differ from what was intended. So, for example, after the first PISA studies, many countries uh, tried to reduce ability grouping practices which means that they try to avoid to sort students into different classes or schools based on their achievement. And the countries did so because the international results suggested that ability grouping does not increase achievement, but increases socioeconomic inequality. And so my research shows that it's actually important to look at different forms of ability grouping and also to look at different groups of students. For example, for the, the performance gap between immigrant and non-immigrant students is smaller in countries which introduced ability grouping for some subjects as compared to when there's no ability grouping or when there's ability grouping for all subjects. And so um, my conclusion would be maybe the data provided by only one PISA study is limited, but if we use the data that is uh, provided by all the PISA data, the six PISA uh, waves we have so far, um, we can generate uh, more validate findings, which is important in order to judge whether policy recommendations are adequate.